to another episode on ASUG 12 exams. So in this episode, we are looking at the August 2022 Science Paper 1. So in this episode, we are focusing on the uh, multiple choice uh, section of this standard O-level physics. So in this episode, we are going to look at the first uh, five questions of this paper. Then in the next uh, episode, we are going to uh, cut on from where we are going to uh, stop from. So let us move straight to question one. Which of the following is not an example of a basic unit? So we look at A. A is an umpire, which is basically uh, the basic unit for measuring current. Then B, meter, which is a basically the basic unit for measuring length. Then we have second, which is the basic unit for measuring time. Then of course we have what. So what is basically a work done per second, which is a basically the unit for power. So what you notice here is what is the combination of uh, two things. Work done, which is in joules, measured in joules. Then a uh, second, which is a measure of time. So D is basically not an example of the basic unit. So mostly uh, the basic units, they have one item they are measuring. So if it's a drive, it's a combination of two. So the what is a drive? We go to question A2. The following diagram shows a broken loom used to measure the length of an object. What is the zero error and the actual length of the object? So when you're talking about uh, the zero error, which we are required to find and find the actual length, the zero error basically refers to the type of an error in which an instrument used to measure something gives a reading when the true reading at that particular time is basically zero. So before even you measure anything, there will be a reading. In that case, we are talking about in zero error. So meaning it's not starting from zero. So what you notice in this case, this is a four. Then a four, we have 10 subunits here, then we move to 5. So it will be 5 minus 4, then over 10, we get 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1. So we are measuring from here to here. Now this is below 4 by 0.2. So this one is basically already starting at 3.8. So we are already starting at 3.8 instead of starting from 0. When there is no zero error, this measurement should have started from zero. But it's not starting from zero, so we already have a positive 3.8 as an error of measurement. Then, if we were to measure the true measurement or the actual measurement, so this is basically a 3.8, then we are measuring up to here, which is a basically a 0 0.1, 0 0.1 below 6. So it's basically 6 minus 0.8. 1 or 0 0.1 then we are getting 5.9 so this reading here is 5.9 so to find the actual length what you do is basically length actual length it will be 5.9 minus which is the reading here at this point minus the starting reading where, where are we starting from we are starting from 3.8 so 3.8 then we get basically 2 0.1 centimeter. So 2.1 centimeter is uh, the correct reading. So we know the zero error is already this one. Then the true reading is 2.1. So we know that A is the correct answer. Let us look at question A3. A person dropped an orange from a basket on his head, 1.8 meters to the ground. With what velocity does it strike the ground? So basically, in this case, we are required to find the velocity. So how can we find velocity? So we know that a velocity is basically given by displacement over time. Okay, so we need to know displacement and the time. In this question, we haven't been given any time. So because time is not given to us, but we know displacement, which is the height, but we cannot use this formula. 
then alternative we can find a final velocity is equal to a initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time so in this case we need to know our initial velocity which we know is zero because it's being dropped from the head then acceleration then time but again we're not given time so we cannot use uh, this formula though we can find the acceleration we know that acceleration due to gravity is basically given by 9.8 meters per second square which is also gravity is given by 9.8 uh, newtons per kg these are approximately 10 meters per second square then also equal to uh, basically uh, 10 newton per kg so these formulas so we have only been given the height so when you're only given the height then there is an alternative formula that you can use to find a uh, velocity which is basically velocity square which is final is equal to initial velocity square plus 2 times gravity okay then multiply by the height so we know what gravity is so gravity is basically uh, this one okay then the height is given to us we know initial velocity is basically zero because it's being dropped from where the basket on the head so it was not moving so we substitute so v square is equal to a basically initial zero square then plus two multiply by gravity which is 10 we are going to use the approximate 10 then multiply by the height which is 1.8 meters then we are going to end up with a basically two times 18 is equal to v square so v square is equal to a basically 36 then we find the square root the square root remember velocity in this case is positive so we're only looking for the positive square root so v is equal to basically uh, six meters per second as in the velocity so which is in this case uh, c we move to question e f4 the following graph shows how the speed of a car varies with time so we have velocity meters per second then we have time in seconds what was happening to the motion of the car between 10 seconds and 20 seconds the acceleration of the car was so it's between basically this part and the, this part so we know that um, acceleration is given by velocity which is final minus initial velocity over time so if you notice in this case uh, basically the velocity is not changing so between this part that we're interested in so this is initial velocity then this is final velocity so the change here on top is basically zero over a uh, change in time which is uh, basically uh, 10 seconds so 10 we end up with zero meters per second square so velocity is basically zero and you notice that d is the correct answer just to take note in this case when the graph is falling here velocity is decreasing this is decelerating okay decelerating then uh, this part velocity is increasing so this is accelerating so meaning the velocity is increasing per uh, unit time let us look at question a5 a uniform plank is pivoted at its midpoint two weights are added to the plank one weight on each side of the pivot in the positions shown in the following diagram a vertical force is applied at end x to balance the plank what is the size and the direction of this force so we are asked to find two things the direction and the size of the force so uh, we know what the principle of moment states for a body to be in equilibrium so for the body to be in equilibrium the sum of clockwise moments must be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments so meaning we need to equate these two so we know that the pivot is here so all the moment in this direction must be equal to the moment in this direction so we know to the left of pivot we have basically at uh, this force and we have basically a uh, force x which is basically 
acting this direction or this direction then we have this side which is acting this direction so we need to find what x is which is balancing the plank so we need to find the moment which is a base cutting the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the pivot and this should be in meters so we know that these are already in meters so let us start with here at the left so we know that uh, the force multiplied by to the left side multiplied by distance to the left side so we sum all these must equal to the summation of the force multiplied by distance on the right and side so when these two are equal the uh, plank is going to balance so we start with basically we know that uh, we have 12 newtons multiplied by distance so this is a uh, basically 2 then plus we have x which we are looking for multiplied by the distance from the pivot which is a uh, basically 2 plus 2 which is 4 multiplied by 4 then must equal to so this is x then uh, equal to this side the right hand side one of one force which is 8 newton then how far is it from the pivot is it 2 meters so it will be a basically 8 multiplied by 2 then this x is basically the force we are looking for so it will be 12 times 2 which is basically 24 then plus this will be f f times 4 it will be a 4f we are looking for this force at x then equal to 8 times 2 which is 16 then we have 24 plus 4f x equals to 16 then 4f x which is the force equal to a 16 minus 24 the moment this one crosses in the equal sign becomes a negative then we are going to have 4 fx is equal to a negative 8 the difference then we divide by 4 then we divide by 4 we are going to end up with fx is equal to negative 2 so negative 2 means is pulling in the opposite direction of the other one so remember this is 24 is pulling downward okay which is uh, this one multiplied by this one then this one because it's negative should be pulling upward so that's what the negative means so upward it means the opposite direction because it's downward otherwise it's not going to balance so we need to have up here a negative two which is force that's what we need to have so this tells us basically we're going to have two newtons as a force then upward which is the opposite of this one so you notice that a b is the correct answer so please join me in the next episode as we look at question six going forward.